Yemen is in the throes of the world's worst humanitarian crisis. The poorest Arab nation was already in dire straits. But a civil war that erupted in 2014 has made the situation even more grim. Now, international support to end the conflict is growing. That's because ordinary Yemenis desperately need help, caught in a conflict that has become a proxy war between regional powers Saudi Arabia and Iran. Also increasing pressure is the killing of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi, a hit that U.S. intelligence believes was orchestrated by the Saudis. The killing shined a light on the U.S. role in the war and its support for Saudi Arabia, which is leading a coalition battling Iranian-backed Houthi rebels. The task of bringing the war to a close will be filled with challenges. To understand them, it helps to look at Yemen's tangle of sectarian fault lines, its history of civil war, and the motivations of regional and world powers. Yemen sits at the southern tip of the Arabian Peninsula, overlooking the vital shipping lanes of the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. The nation's history has been marked by colonization and dynastic rule. For decades, it was split between two nations, north and south. During the 1960s, war erupted. Spasms of civil war continued. By 1990, the north took over the south, forming a unified Yemen. Yemen's longtime autocratic ruler, President Ali Abdullah Saleh, once described the challenge of navigating Yemen's complicated tribal politics as dancing on the heads of snakes. Saleh was perhaps the trickiest player of all, manipulating allies and enemies alike. For years, he took billions of dollars from the U.S. to fight al-Qaeda, even as he enlisted the militants to fight his own domestic enemies. He was ousted in 2011 after a pro-democracy Arab Spring uprising, but the democracy that Yemenis had hoped for didn't materialize. The latest civil war began in 2014 when Saleh allied with the Houthis and together they took over the capital Sana'a and much of the north and west. President Abed Rabbo Mansour Hadi fled to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia formed a coalition of Arab and Gulf states to push back the Houthis, who they believed were backed by Iran. The US and European countries have sold billions of dollars worth of weapons to the coalition. The Houthis, inspired by Iran's revolution, are fiercely anti-American and anti-Western, portraying themselves as defenders of Yemeni's Zaidi Shiite minority. Iran denies supplying the rebels, but the US says it has evidence. Complicating the picture are militants, mainly Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, once called the terrorist organization's most dangerous branch. The U.S. has long sought to strike at militant groups in Yemen, and its use of drones has dramatically grown in recent years. After the Khashoggi killing, the U.S. has cut back on its logistical support to the Saudi coalition. The ensuing war has been devastating, with estimates of more than 60,000 people killed, millions driven from their homes, and vast destruction to the infrastructure from coalition bombing. It has also pushed Yemen into near famine, with millions at risk of starving to death. The AP's reporting over the past year uncovered new dimensions to the tragedy. Mothers and fathers are giving up food so they can dedicate what little they do have to keeping their starving children alive. Coalition member United Arab Emirates has set up a network of secret prisons all around the South where torture is rampant, including sexual abuse. After AP's reporting, dozens of prisoners were released. Torture is also rife in the prisons of the Houthi rebels, who have jailed thousands in crackdowns aimed at eliminating any dissent, or just aimed at collecting captives that they can use to trade for ransom or their own captured fighters. As the UN and the international community push for an end to the conflict, it remains to be seen whether a peaceful, unified Yemen is possible. Houthis don't want a return to how it was before the latest war, and the country is more fragmented than ever. Coalition-backed militias that control parts of the South don't necessarily support Hadi. Some in the South want to secede. Militants feel emboldened. Even if the war ends soon, Yemen will struggle with its legacy for years to come.